Hi Virgo, welcome to your love and romance reading for November 2022. This is for Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. You might stumble upon this video at some time in the future. It's all good. You're going to stumble upon it whenever you're meant to hear it. Um, keep in mind it is a general reading for the collective. Therefore, not every single message is going to resonate. Take what does, leave what doesn't. So without further ado, my dears and my darlings, let's see what's coming up for the Virgo Collective here. Virgo Sun, Virgo Moon, Virgo Rising, and Virgo Venus for love and romance. Move you all just a tad bit closer. Okay, so first card coming up here for the Virgo Collective is... The Nine of Wands. So Nine of Wands can come up in a couple of different ways. It can come up to answer a question having to do with timing. Like, when is something going to be wrapped up? Or when are we going to see each other again? Or when are we going to move in? Or when are we going to get engaged? Or when are we going to, when am I going to meet my person? Um, if we looked at something um, in terms of numbers, like as completion if we say 10 is complete 10 is finish line 10 is goal you're at nine right now right so you're 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 right there you're just like one more thing and then boom here we are mission accomplished goal complete right you're, you're right at that threshold sometimes this card comes up because we just want to give up we just want to throw in the towel we're, we're we're tired we feel like it's taking too long and spirits like look You've completed 9 out of 10. Right now would be the worst time to give up. Like, why would you do 9 and then give up just before 10? So sometimes it comes in to answer questions around timing. Sometimes it comes up because there is an opportunity being presented. Something is coming up here and we're a little bit defensive about accepting it, embracing it. Uh, letting it in right so maybe some of you Virgo maybe you've been very selective about who you're with maybe you keep your circle nice and small and there could be somebody coming up like Virgo I really like you Virgo I really see a future with you I want to be with you or you're coming out of hermit mode and you're like wanting to date but you're like how do I know I'm making the right decision how do I know I'm letting the right person in well nine of wands Every single one of these wands belong to someone that tried to take this guy out. You know, they tried to challenge him, fight him, take him down. He was able to defend himself, protect himself, take that wand away from the uh, assailant and put it behind him as like a tool, a token of victory, uh, an experience that he's gained. And so in most decks, when we see the nine of wands, the guy's got a bandage around his head. He's got his arm in, in, in a sling, but he's holding on to his wand and he's got the other ones behind him and he's looking out ahead, right? So it's basically saying you might have taken some hits here. You might have some wounds here from the past, but you're still standing. You're still alert. And every single one of these trials and uh, situations gave you experience, gave you new tools. Basically, the Nine of Wands says this is not your first rodeo. You've seen every dirty little trick. You've seen every lie, every manipulation. There's absolutely positively nothing new under the sun anybody can come at you with. You've seen it all. So as long as you're staying alert and paying attention, and looking out for those red flags and not ignoring them, you're not going to get pulled into something that's wasting your time. You're not going to find yourself in another situation ship. You're not going to find yourself uh, in a karmic cycle that lasts five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And you're like, oh gosh, I wasted all that time. You're not going to end up in that situation. You're not going to trust the wrong person. You're not going to let the wrong person in because you're smart. And you're using your common sense and you're looking out for red flags and you have so much experience to guide you. So here you can trust your judgment. 
when it comes to moving forward and experiencing a new relationship. I feel here also, Virgo, for some of you, you may have been dating, but still under the guise of like not really taking anybody seriously. So even if you were dating, maybe you kind of kept the person at a bit of a distance or maybe you just kind of didn't take them seriously or, you know, like you weren't getting feelings involved. Well, I'm sorry to say some of you don't want to hear this. I'm feeling a vibe here with this nine of wands. Like we're not just talking about giving somebody a chance. We're talking about catching feelings. And that can be terrifying. <laughs> and so I feel here, Virgo, this is a situation where it's not just giving somebody a chant, but it's like lowering the defenses and letting the heart feel. So I do feel there's a sense here of like catching feelings. Maybe some of you are currently in a relationship and you're trying to work things out, but your heart has been very guarded. Maybe this person lets you down or... You're just scared of getting hurt, whatever it might be. Well, now the relationship is coming to the point where the only way this is going to work is if you embrace vulnerability and let yourself feel. Some of you in an existing relationship, that might be the criticism you hear from your partner. You shut me out. You don't let me in. I, I, I don't know if you have feelings for me. Like you're just always kind of a little bit distant. And so it's like, oh gosh, well, here we go. I'm going to have to decide, do I want this relationship? If I want this relationship, I got to let the wall down. I, I got to let the feelings start flowing. Uh, and that's what I feel here, Virgo. I feel that this is a, a matter of the heart. Not just getting to know somebody, not just keeping an open mind, but letting somebody into your heart. The next card that's coming up here for the Virgo Collective is the Three of Wands, okay? So, so far we have uh, fire cards, right? The wands are fire. And so this is action, right? The wands are about action, like actually taking steps. So this isn't going to be something that you're thinking about or you're pondering. You're either going to do it or you're not. It's kind of like, here it is, yes or no. You're having to make the decision in the physical realm, in the physical reality. It's not just about, you know, oh, okay, energetically, am I manifesting this? Energetically, am I going to call this? And energetically, am I going to leave space for this person to come into my life? They're here. They're here and you're going to take action or you're not going to take action but the decision needs to be made, and this is something that's happening here in real time. The Three of Wands sometimes gets a bad rap um, when it comes to tarot because for some reason, some readers, every time they see the Three of Wands, they're like, third-party situation. So if you're used to hearing that and you just saw the Third of, the third of Wands, the Three of Wands, and it freaked you out, that's not what this card means every single time. Maybe it can mean that sometimes, but it's not going to mean that every single time. Three of Wands is about expanding upon something. And at times it comes up in the sense of the point of no return, which is a perfect continuation of that Nine of Wands almost there. You're at nine. Are you going to give up at 10? In your healing journey, your growth, your manifesting, your relationship. You came all the way to nine. You're going to give up before 10. Why? Three of wands is the point of no return. It's like there's nowhere to go but forward. So even though it may be very scary to let somebody in again, three of wands is like <laughs> curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. It's like I, I have to see where this goes. So the desire is greater than the fear in this instance. And that's doing you a favor because it's getting you moving. It's getting you unstuck. It's moving you forward. Three of Wands could also indicate here that, um, and maybe it could be mutual. You may be doing the same for this person, but Three of Wands could indicate that this is someone that's like expanding your mind, expanding your thinking, expanding your perception, 
uh, where you're seeing things you didn't previously see. There could be a sense of mental expansion, awakening, enlightenment with this three of wands. Okay. And uh, as I said, it could be a mutual thing. You may be doing this for this person and they may be doing it in return for you where there's like this, uh, you know, sometimes with the swords, I get like intellectual uh, compatibility where like we're manifesting uh, somebody who's an intellectual equal. But something about this three of wands, I feel this is like an equal in terms of like visionary gifts or visionary abilities. I don't necessarily mean visionary in terms of like psychic vision. I mean visionary in terms of like ideas. Ideas, creativity, inventions. Um, th there's a very creative energy to this. So I feel like this is someone that like... Uh, there's a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of mutual inspiration of like things. I never thought of doing that. Oh my gosh, what a great idea. Oh my gosh, like let's do this. Let's get working on this together. There could be a sense of enterprise with this person. Okay, with this three of wands where you're having these visionary ideas of things that you want to create or ideas that you want to work on and implement. I feel that this is someone who is, I was saying sometimes the swords for me are somebody who's matching you intellectually. I feel this is someone who's matching your imagination. Uh, you know, maybe you have big ideas, you're a big thinker, and maybe this is something you've learned to tone down over the years. Oh, Virgo, that's, that's so far-fetched. Oh, Virgo, that's such a complicated idea. It would never work. Like maybe you learn to stifle that aspect of yourself for a long time. But I feel like this is somebody who uh, who matches that, who has that same vision, who, who thinks big like you, who has a big imagination like you. And you guys may come together and work together to make some of these ideas realities right? But whatever the case, the three of wands is like, we're going to move forward. We're going to the next step. We're going to the next level. We're going to explore this relationship. We're going to explore this connection and let it, let it take us to the next thing. Let it, let it go to the next level. The next card coming up here for the Virgo collective is the Hierophant. This could be Taurus energy, some of you could be dealing with a Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. If you have a Taurus placement, um, there could be big changes and big shifts happening for you in those houses or in those areas of your life um, that are opening you up to this connection or blessing this connection or this love life or aspects of your love life. Um, also here with the Hierophant, this is commitment. This is commitment. This is like forever, okay? And the Hierophant is like faith. It is one of the cards that's associated with marriage, right? Um, marriage, commitment, truth. Uh, but for me, the Hierophant is like, this is a relationship that's going to stand the test of time because you have a very solid foundation with this person, because you have the same uh, ethics, you have the same morals, you have the same um, priorities, right? So, so you're headed in the same direction, you have the same values, and you're able to build together on a really solid foundation, a relationship that's going to withstand any challenges or difficulties, because you're on the same page, and you're devoted and committed to one another. Uh, there could also be something here in this relationship. Um, I heard piety, I heard pious, but then I also got a feeling or a sense of like, <sighs> trying to think of the right word I want to use here to articulate this. Some of you could be dealing with a person who seems like a bit of a contradiction. Because in this relationship, in this connection, like this could be a very forward thinker. This could be someone who maybe is a bit of a maverick, 
maybe even a bit of a rule breaker, which comes into this creativity and this imagination. Um, that's like inspiring you. And so this person may be very modern in a lot of ways, but they might have a lot of really old school characteristics or beliefs. And I feel for some reason with this Hierophant, uh, maybe it's you feeling this way or the person coming in where there's a feeling or a sense of like, they might feel like, um, like an old school courtship or an old school dating. This could be someone that would even maybe say something like, um, maybe they don't have issues with physical intimacy, but they might say that they don't want to like physically, like, uh, consummate physically until after marriage. Or this could be someone who's like, well, you know, if we're going to get married, it's really important to me that we're getting married like in my church or uh, in a specific church. There could be something here that is, seems like a bit of a contradiction. Like this person seems very modern, but at heart, when it comes to this connection, they might be feeling like, well, I want, I want a blessing. I want a blessing on this marriage. I want a blessing in this relationship. So I feel that if this relationship is going to be blessed, this is the way we need to do it. So there could be someone who's coming in that at heart has some really old school values here uh, for some of you with this Hierophant. Um, I also feel here with this Hierophant, um, That there is a spiritual blessing on this connection. I don't feel it's something that you have to be afraid of losing. Losing the blessing. Because I feel it's blessed. I feel it's blessed spiritually. I feel it's blessed by your angels and guides. I feel it's blessed mutually by both of your loved ones who have passed on. Who are coming in as like guardian angels or protectors. Um, I almost feel like there's like a spiritual matchmaking happening here. Like, you know, your family who has passed on, who acts as guardian angels, got together with their family who's passed on, who's their guardian angels. And they're like, we're going to we're going to get our uh, great, 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 great grandbabies together here or our great grandbabies together here. Like, like, I feel a sense of like a like a spiritual matchmaking. OK, but for whatever reason, there could be somebody in this relationship that's getting a little bit paranoid, like I don't want to lose this blessing or I don't want to lose this favor. And so they may be doing very old school or very traditional um, expectations here in, in the dating or courtship. Um, maybe you're in a maybe you're in a relationship and maybe your partner is saying like, you know, I want to go and get a blessing at the church or I want to go get somebody to pray over us. There could be this kind of aspect. The next card that's coming up here for the Virgo Collective is the Hanged Man. Now we have Major Arcana cards coming in back to back. When Major Arcana cards come in back to back for me, these are big changes in a short period of time. This is a really strong connection where there's lots of past lives and you guys have come together and have this contract that you're going to learn uh, or grow together. You're going to meet specifically for these reasons. And the hanged man can be a bit of like a cosmic timeout when our, again, our thinking is being expanded. There's things we're not seeing. There's things we're not noticing. And our angels and guys are trying to help us to see those things. I feel here, Virgo, that there's a, there's a message for you. Um here with this hanged man i feel this message is more so for virgo than about the other person because i feel it's very connected to what i was getting with the hierophant some of you are looking at this person like you're kind of a contradiction because on one hand you're very modern you're very forward thinking on the other hand you're coming in with like these old school beliefs or mentalities or I, I, I'm hearing the word superstition. Some of you might say you're being superstitious with this. But I feel here with this hanged man, 
um, it's kind of like you might be looking at these things very black and white or like they have nothing to do with each other or they're opposite of each other, but they're not. They're not opposite of each other. They're interconnected. So I feel that this is a relationship that's going to expand your thinking, expand your mindset, expand your spirituality, um, expand maybe even some of your uh, spiritual beliefs or religious beliefs. So a sense of like awakening. I also feel here, Virgo, that you may be dealing with a person who's very smart, uh, very creative, and they may have certain complexities about them. And so you're being asked to take a step back and really observe this person and take note of these differences or these layers. I feel this is someone with a lot of layers, a lot of layers. And the quicker you see those layers and are aware of them, uh, the more you're going to enjoy this relationship, the more you're going to get out of it, um, the smoother it's going to go. Uh, very specifically, some of you have found love and relationships to be very boring. Uh, this is someone who is anything but boring. But that being said, there's complexities here. There's layers. I'm not saying this is a moody person, uh, not any more than the next person. But uh, or like they, like this is someone who's like, oh well, you know, you gotta you gotta get past the thorns to appreciate the rose. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying in order to really understand this person and have a really good, solid connection, um, uh, th there are things here that you might miss. And it's, it's like you're missing out. It's kind of like if you, I, I hate to use this example because people aren't equipment, people aren't devices, but it's like if you went and you picked up something really cool from, the store, so like something electronic, and you didn't bother to read the manual, and you've had it for like two years, and then all of a sudden you find out from somebody else who has it that it has all these functions you've never used or you've never implemented. And you're like, oh my God, I wish I would have known that. It would have made my life so much easier. How did you know that? Well, I read the manual. Like, that's the kind of thing I mean here. Like, I think this person has a lot of potential. And there's lots of things here you may miss about this person. And you're going to regret not noticing it sooner uh, if you don't notice it. So I feel like really be observant, really listen, really watch, really observe. Um, because I feel like this is like a, a one in a million kind of person. The next card that's coming up here for the Virgo Collective is the Six of Wands. And Six of Wands is victory. It's overcoming obstacles, challenges. It could be beating out the competition. Uh, maybe for some of you, this is a person that was being pursued by a lot of other people, but they only had eyes for you. They saw you. They wanted you. They didn't care about the other people that were chasing them. Or maybe they view you as like you had a lot of options and they're feeling very lucky, or maybe both of you had a lot of options, but it's like you have eyes for each other, uh, and you're overcoming any obstacles, any challenges, any problems, right? Uh, really going along here with this committed energy, right? Like really being committed, like if there's a problem, we're going to figure it out, we're going to tackle it together. Uh, it's not us fighting each other, it's us against the problem, you know, working as a team. So a sense of victory, overcoming challenges, overcoming obstacles. Um, I don't know. I also feel a sense of like, like, uh, like a valiant energy here with this, uh, with the six of wands. So this could be like a sense of chival chivalry or just like a valiant kind of character. Maybe some of you are manifesting this or you've been wanting this. Uh, I just get like an old school charm, an old school vibe here, like in a positive way. You might want to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos or your Venus. Sometimes those are going to resonate more than your sun sign or whatever this might be for you. Oh my gosh, I've got alarms and stuff going off here. I'm sorry. 
Uh, <clears throat> so you may want to check out your other placements. Sometimes they might resonate more. Sometimes it might add a little uh, extra meaning. Not extra meaning, but like extra information. Uh, more pieces to the puzzle, so to speak. So there is a playlist in the description that will take you to the other love videos. It'll be easier for you to find the other placements. Uh, there's also a playlist in the description that will take you to the weekly forecast where I talk about everything other than love. If you want to check that out. And if you'd like to schedule a private reading with me, there's a link in the description that will take you to my scheduling page, calendly.com slash amethyst angelite, where you can schedule a private reading with me. And just to let you guys know, I, I decided this year, I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but I've decided now through the middle of December, I'm going to set aside 10% of all of the income that comes in from donations and from private readings to buy toys, to donate to Toys for Tots. And I'll take pictures of everything I end up buying. I'll take pictures of the you know final donation I'm making so that everyone can see what was contributed. So if you've been thinking about getting a private reading and you like the idea of contributing towards that, please do check out the scheduling page and the different reading options and see what looks good to you. Um, and I thank you guys for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I hope you'll check out the weekly forecasts and the daily messages on the channel as well. And I hope you have a fabulous November. Take care and be well, my darlings.